Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Chu Fu. He's a professor of um, medicine at Harvard Medical School, and uh, actually of neurobiology uh, at uh, Harvard Medical School. And his primary appointment is at Dana-Farber Cancer, Cancer Institute in Boston. Uh, welcome, Chu Fu, and thank you for talking to us about your newest paper. Um, and if uh, I'll let you introduce that paper. Oh, so thank you very much, Monica, for this opportunity and to discuss our recent work on acupuncture. Yeah, we're excited to hear about it, and particularly how it pertains to inflammation. So can you tell us about how you uh, became scientifically interested in this field of acupuncture and inflammation? So uh, my lab uh, for many years, for the last 10 years, has been studied a pain pathway, in fact. So we uh, spent uh, a lot of effort to map the sensory pathway, particularly in the spinal cord level, to showing that different neural circuit can transmit different forms of pain, like a neuropathic pain or inflammatory pain. And uh, but in the pain field, uh, in last uh, 20 years, we do have faced some kind of like a, not to say crisis, but uh, we had a workshop, like for example, last year at the NIH, showing this, um, a lot of preclinical study, we had a lot of success in animal, and uh, we have not yet produced new pain medicine. So we had discussed a lot of reason why it's not successful. Some, like for example, my lab in the last couple of years to show that we may not measure animal behavior you know, properly. We a lot of the behavior as they may not most clinical relevant. And we published a paper in, in Nature last year, for example, showing that the sustained pain versus like a first line reflexive defensive reaction are uh, a different pathway. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people measure, you know, defensive reactions. And the, so this is the, the pain research. The other thing, I, as we study more and more pain pathway, we realize there are just so many different pain pathway can redundantly activate them. For each pain pathway has so many different mechanism that can activate that particular pathway. So just, uh, so basically in the pain field, we target those specific molecule or target or pathway. We have not yet produced a, a new pain medicine. So this is one of the crises we face, you know, that's why NIH organized a workshop to discuss this. So at the same time, when we think about the pain, but we know that acupuncture has been in, in clinically it's effective to treat many chronic pain, like low back pain, it's a larger clinical trial. And they showing that real acupuncture or sometimes a sham acupuncture can reduce pain in comparison to conventional treatment. But they don't understand why, you know, the, uh, uh, what the basis for acupuncture to work and uh, mm -hmm. why the sham control can also work sometimes. So, so this, uh, um, this has some kind of uh, philosophy, philosophical change in my research, okay. Like uh, for many decades, we, we, we focus on the pain pathway, try to stop the pain pathway to, to treat the pain. But we're facing the problem with the redundancy, degeneracy for the pain mechanism. We has not been so successful for this approach. For the traditional Chinese medicine, you know, the philosophy has slightly different. Say when you have a pain, like say you joint pain, pain is a part of the symptom of the disease. So the traditional Chinese medicine is to treat the disease. How can we stop the inflammation to reduce mm -hmm. inflammation? When the inflammation resolves, uh, then the pain may be reduced so as a symptom. So it's a, so this a kind of philosophy, I think the, um, it's a, like a, you're looking, treat as a disease or, you know, it's as a whole thing of the whole body, like holistic view of the disease. You, you have to consider it together, like a target tissue, immune cell, nerve fiber, which has a very complex interaction among them. Yeah. So this is a kind of philosophical change, like the tree or to study the, the, the root of the disease versus, mm -hmm. you know, many, uh, to treat the, the symptom associated with the disease. And uh, it's not as, as, but Western medicine starting to, you know, uh, realize and uh, uh, system, this kind of system physiology approach to, for thinking disease and, and for treatment. And uh, as I got a lot of attention here as well, like uh, 
that's why NIH has NCCIH, you know, institute to, mm -hmm. to integrate those uh, integrated medicine. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Um, and I, I just wondered, you know, with that sort of jumping off point, um, can you talk a little bit more about the paper that you just recently released? So, yeah, the, for the acupuncture, you know, the, also the other um, clinical trial largest uh, clinical trial showing that efficacy how acupuncture can treat like a GI tract disorder, like gastrointestinal motility problem or chronic pain problem. But generally speaking, we still know fairly little about how acupuncture really works in terms of what's behind so like a neuroanatomic or biological basis. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, uh, I think the part of the reason I, 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 I think is um, we do not have really good tool, you know, for until recent year to manipulate, to study what sensory pathway really activated by acupuncture and how the, the acupuncture stimulation, which you, you has a somatic sensation, eventually why they can treat the disease. Sometimes they can treat disease long distantly. For example, a lot of GI tract problem, like disorder, which is very effective, like formulating nausea, like a management for cancer patient, and you know when they receive the chemotherapy treatment, acupuncture is very effective. But this, how can you, you know, you put a needle stimulation in your distal hind leg, you know, like let's say acupoint like ST36, which is a little pain in the distal limb. Mm -hmm. You can uh, relieve the symptom or, or you know, associated with a gastrointestinal, you know, movement. So, so there's a big jump, you know, gap, you know, for, from how the somatic tissue stimulation can modulate the body physiology in a long distance manner so in your in your paper the, the paper is uh, i guess i didn't introduce it earlier but it's evidence um you know it's uh, really evidence in mice that this electropuncture um reduces inflammation via specific neural pathways that was you know yeah, um, so. you know there it was published in neuron august 12th and basically you're trying to help map the neuron anatomical underpinnings of this you know uh, of acupuncture but can you talk a little bit about what you found when you were uh, using the uh, the at the acupoint that was ST25 versus the acupoint that was uh, yeah. ST36. Okay, so before uh, I get to that space, I just want to highlight a little bit more first. So as I mentioned, we have a technical problem, and like for example, how can we study this kind of problem? Because in human, it's very hard to get to the neural pathway. We, we cannot manipulate the human pathway. Yeah. But, you know, in animal. And we, we can do, we have a tool, genetic tool. In this paper, we have genetic tool to remove the different sympathetic, neuro, sympathetic cell components. Mm -hmm. For example, the sympathetic neuron, innovate, innovating the, the spring or the, or, or the adrenal chromatin cell. We, have, we can create the mind has select manipulation on this two different autonomic pathway. Mm -hmm. Then we will test, you know, how acupuncture effect will be impacted by the removal of one of this cap and, and component or when we remove the both components. So we use a system inflammation as an experimental uh, system. So because for animals that you have to find as, a, uh, as an experimental system with a very robust effect by acupuncture. So this is uh, accumulated from investigated from China and the United States showing that acupuncture stimulation and handling acupoint, let's say there's a stomach acupoint ST36, we call mm -hmm. just ST36. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a people showing that this acupuncture stimulation can powerfully reduce the system inflammation, can promote animal survival, survival from 20% to 80% when we use a, a bacteria endotoxin to create a, a systemic inflammation, mimic the cytokine storm, see in patient with a, a severe like a bacteria or viral infection. So it means that acupuncture work in this model system. Then we can study now how acupuncture work. So in, for this particular paper, use a genetic tool to create the mice with the, with the removal of the different autonomic pathway. We review a couple major principle. The first principle I want to show, show that you know, serious acupoint selectivity. So we discovered the, uh, 
the one of the pathways studied before by Louis Uller, showing that ST36 stimulation can drive a vagal adrenal access, anti-inflammatory access. Yeah. We find this pathway can be activated by low, low intensity electrical acupuncture. So, so low electrical intensity is enough to, act and to drive this pathway. And interesting when the same low intensity stimulation, if you stimulate at the abdominal region, you cannot do it. You cannot do anything. This pathway cannot be activated in the abdominal region, but mm -hmm. it can be activated in the distal hind leg, hind leg in the acupoint. So this, you know, touch the one of the, which I think one of the very important concepts, like I said, do we have the acupoint selectivity or specificity? Yeah. In, in driving a certain, you know, uh, physiology or like in this case, a uh, uh, vagal adrenal, uh, pathway activation. So there is acupoint selectivity. That's the first thing we found. Out. The second thing we found is that you different autonomic pathways, sometimes you, you do need a different stimulation intensity. For example, we find when we stimulate at the abdominal region, remember the low intensity cannot do anything, cannot activate vagal reflex, or cannot also activate sympathetic reflex. So so 0 0.5, like this low, elect low intensity electric stimulation has no impact on that system inflammation. Yeah. But when we raise the electrical stimulant intensity to uh, one milliampere or three milliampere, or we just say high intensity stimulation, now you can activate a new autonomic pathway that we call spinal sympathetic reflex, which in, now you can lead, in, lead, lead to the activation of the uh, like a splenic sympathetic pathway. You can reduce the inflammation controlled by the spring, which is the largest immune organ, which contributes a significant portion of the pro-inflammatory cytokine. Mm -hmm. so, so, this, uh, so this will give you a, a second um, principle, I mean that the stimulation intensity or reflect how acupuncture was stimulating your body. You know, the, because, you know, experienced doctor will they based on different disease or symptoms, they were adjusted at different intensity, manually or, or you know, elect, elect, electrically. So this means that, so because different intensity can activate different somatic sensory neuron, you know, eventually can activate different autonomic pathway. So that's mm -hmm. a, a one thing. Um, so it's almost like a recruitment of different, different. Um, nerve axons within the bundle or nerves within the bundle. Yeah, because of like a somatic sensory neuron, as we study somatic sensory neuron for many decades, and um, these neurons are very heterogeneous. It's a different size, a different myelination sheets, uh, which translate into electrical stimulation, mean that different threshold for the activation. Yeah. yeah. The larger axon or neuron, they, the threshold will be lower. So you can imagine and also the neuron can respond to electrical signal can be different, depends on different eye channel, you know, profile. So, so this will, uh, the, the heterogeneity of so much sensor neuron you know, will convert into that, mean that different intensity electric stimulation can produce, can act a different spectrum of the sensory afferent. As this is a different sensory afferent has a differential capacity to drive the different autonomic pathway. Because autonomic pathway is extremely heterogeneous, functionally and molecularly anatomically. So this is a, we really know very little, you know, uh, the rule. So this is one of the, one of the steps um, to show that the different body region can activate different autonomic pathway and different intensity from the same body region can activate different autonomic pathway. Yeah, so that's and a paper shows of, this very nicely. Yeah, and uh, the the other thing I want to point point out, uh, which is the sort of major discovery from the from this uh, study, is a basic showing that acupuncture effect it also can be very dynamic. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and uh, so that's okay. And uh, so I try to, you know, so acupuncture stimulation in terms of how acupuncture modulate disease, it's really also dependent on what kind of disease state. Acupuncture 
can be detrimental. I think this part, a lot of people may not appreciate before. What we discovered from that, the, while the low intensity stimulation, which uh, drives a vagal adrenal anti-inflammatory axis, that pathway is disease state independent, oh, no matter for prevention and for the, um, for the treatment of the ongoing system inflammation, this low electrical in intensity stimulation, which can only work and can only work on the hind leg, hind leg, you know, acupoint, not in abdominal, right. can reduce the uh, uh, inflammation and promote animal survival. But for the high intensity stimulation, which produces, which activate no adrenergic sympathetic neuron, we turn, we found that this pathway can be very dynamic. What happens is that when you, re, you know, the animal responds to bacterial endotoxin, the immune cell change, like for example in the spring, they will, the, before the bacterial infection, the, the, the immune cell, they express like we call a beta 2 adrenergic receptor. Mm -hmm. And those are, so when the sympathetic neuron activate, release no adrenaline, activate beta 2 receptor, and will will produce anti-inflammatory effects. But uh, after bacterial infection, when the endotoxin release from the bacteria, they will activate a signaling pathway in the, in, in the, in the macrophage, for example, in the immune cell. And those immune cells will turn on a different adrenergic receptor, which we call alpha-2 receptor. And when this alpha-2 receptors are pro-inflammatory, and they have much higher affinity to the no adrenaline. So when, at some point, as disease you know, uh, progresses, when the alpha-2 receptor, which is a pro-inflammatory, becomes dominant, now when you give the ac high intensity acupuncture stimulation, cause the release of no adrenaline, will produce a net outcome that becomes is a pro-inflammatory. The animal will who has the most severe inflammation, they will die sooner. All mm -hmm. animals die in our, when it is a late you know, stimulation. So this is actually cause a real a surprise for us because of this uh, for us you know, to, appre to appreciate, oh my God, you know, the acupuncture can be, you know, you need to be careful mm -hmm. if you use it uh, not properly and uh, sometimes can be detrimental. And particularly for manual acupuncture, you know, in a clinical setup, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to control the intensity. But unfortunately, the, the persistent anti-inflammatory pathway, we, uh, uh, which evoked from, is evoked by low level, low intensity stimulation at a high limb region. This is a vagal adrenal pathway. And uh, this pathway can be beneficial no matter you know what a disease state, and because this is a low intensity, mean that when we use this low intensity stimulation, we can bypass that pro-inflammatory pathway, which require high intensity stimulation to activate. So this way, we can uh, by optimizing the stimulation parameter, we can produce a persistent anti-inflammatory effect by acupuncture. Can you talk a little bit more about the macrophage um, interaction? So when you when you add the LPS and induce the bacterial infection yeah. in the mice, then you're talking about the macrophage is now expressing this AVA2 receptor. Yeah. And um, how are you monitoring the macrophages at that point? So we, uh, because in animal, we can um, take the macrophage, macro, uh, I call macrophage, you call macrophage. Uh, so uh, maybe my pronunciation is not I correct. don't think, probably mine is wrong. So, so that immune cell, we can like take, take out the spring at a different time point after LPS exposure. So we can do the uh, histochemistry. Mm -hmm. And by or by you know the uh, ELISA you know method to measure the cytokine and and, prof, and, and change, and it's the first oh and we also can take the splint cell to gene expression profile to look in the adrenergic receptor change. Mm -hmm. So what we find is that basically it just take one hour after LPS this bacterial endotoxin injection, the splenic uh, macrophage you know. 
uh, cell already turn on the alpha-2 receptor, which is barely detectable before the LPS you know, exposure. So, so, um, so mean that it's a take a really one or two hour for, um, for the immune system already make a functional switch. And then okay. these macrophages become systemic? And the, this macrophage, and we only look at the, within the take a spring, but the macrophage can, um, the, the, uh, how much trafficking, you know, macrophage will left the spring uh, traffic to other border region. I, this part I needed to more, more study because there is extensive immune cell trafficking. They can, the immune cell can leave the immune organ like lymph node or the uh, like spring and they go to the inflamed tissue region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so this is a, um, uh, so I mean that the splenic inflammation can impact uh, the inflammation as a body region. Um, and so, so, so this is a, a functional switch when, when we give the alpha-2 receptor antagonist combined mm -hmm. with acupuncture, now, you, by blocking the pro-inflammatory you know, branch, the, the remaining beta-2 receptor, which is still anti-inflammatory at this moment, now they can produce an anti-inflammation anti effect. So, so for high-intensity stimulation, if we uh, com uh, acupuncture, if combined with the alpha-2 receptor antagonist, can produce a beneficial effect they still become anti-inflammatory and can promote animal survival. If you just do acupuncture and not the antagonist, the alpha receptor antagonist, do you see the similar results or what do you see? So, and as the, if you just a uh, high intensity, if we started before LPS exposure, if we give acupuncture first, mm -hmm. which we call preventive, and uh, this a beta-2 receptor dominant, and uh, some reasons, for some reason, after beta-2 activation, it changes the response of the body to the LPS. So it has a very powerful can suppress LPS-induced uh, systemic inflammation or cytokine storm. And this animal uh, greatly, animal survival can be greatly um, promoted from 20% from mm -hmm. to 80%. Just two hours after LPS treatment, now we give the acupuncture with the alpha-2 antagonist. Mm -hmm. All animals die, with, die much sooner, and a, and a complete, like even original had 20% survival, now they're all 100% dead. Wow. And then, but just give the alpha-2 antagonist combined with acupuncture, now the, all the, the survival rate um, becomes 70% again. Hmm. So it's a, so this is a fairly, dynamic um, uh, process, you know, for how our body responds to the immune, uh, 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 like uh, respond to the infection. Because initial increased inflammation, like turn, turn, on, turn on alpha-2, to release those pro-inflammatory cytokines, it's beneficial for our, for our body to fight with the you know, infection. And uh, um, but uh, if uh, too much in, you know, inflammation, now those uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines will create those uh, all the like a uh, um, uh, mediator, like which can cause in the organ damage. You know, it's a so mean that the inflammation is really needed to be fine tuned. You know, it's yeah, really yeah, for sure. Can you comment could, or maybe even hypothesize on how um, you know what are your thoughts about? Mm, I guess make, creating an experiment where you would um, change the actual um, uh, stimulation coming from the vagal nerve or coming from some of these afferent in, uh, inputs um, rather than sort of like tweaking it with the acupuncture. I mean, do you think that some inflammation could be mediated by just uh, misfirings or not misfirings but different strengths of of vagal input that are just so in, the, inherent uh, in people uh, that are, that happen yeah, in the, people uh, for the low intensity um, electrical stimulation we know that uh, also from Luis Ula's uh, study in who published a very important paper in in nature medicine 2014 mm -hmm. uh, that anti-inflammatory pathway indeed is required vagal 
different. So when both group, my lab and his lab, when we cut the phagal efferents, and and the acupuncture effects are completely abolished. Mm. And uh, but when we use a high intensity stimulation from the abdominal region, ST25, that acting point, which you can generate spinal single cell reflex can bypass the vagal efferent. In that condition, that preventive anti-inflammatory effect is entirely vagal nerve independent. When we cut the vagal nerve, it has no impact in terms of produce, uh, for, uh, for reducing the inflammations. And uh, yeah. so, so well, this means that there is a vagal nerve dependent anti-inflammatory pathway which can be activated from the hindling ST36 with a low electrical intensity. Yeah. And there is a vagal nerve independent sympathetic pathway can be activated from any body region actually. But that in terms of a uh, splenic sympathetic pathway, both in the abdominal ST25 acupoint or hindling ST36 acupoint. So to so me, this is data uh, funding and uh, because uh, starting point because most study in until we, uh, since 2000, year 2000, when Kevin Tracy discovered vagal efferent stimulation can produce anti-inflammatory effect. All the um, published studies so far by acupuncture very much emphasize the vagal nerve dependent pathway. Yeah. But what we found is a series of vagal nerve independent pathway can be activated by high electrical intensity. And that particular pathway can be preventive for anti-inflammation, produce anti-inflammation effect if the disease at early stage of disease progression or before the disease onset. But this pathway can become detrimental at some point. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, this is very interesting to us, you know, uh, here at the Sugar Science because we recently were um, looking at this one paper that in Nature Biotechnology. It was published uh, November 11th, 2019. The pancreatic nerve electrostimulation inhibits recent onset autoimmune diabetes. And that was Philippe Blanco's group, um, as well as Arun Shridhar, who was uh, affiliated with um, Galvani. And that's a really interesting paper because, you know, they're kind of playing off of what Kevin Tracy has done at set point that we discussed earlier, where they, you know, they went in and they, um, they mapped the nerve projecting to the pancreas and um, to the pancreatic lymph nodes in mice. And they used a very minimally invasive surgical procedure. They put, implanted this little micro cuff electrodes onto the nerve. And then when they stimulated it, they got beta adrenergic receptor mediated accumulation of these B and T cells in the lymph nodes, pancreatic lymph nodes, and reduced the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines following LPS. So they also saw that um, they were able to knock down the autoreactive T cells that were attacking the, the um, pancreatic islet cells, uh, the beta cells in the mice. So it's really interesting, you know, to see, you know, your work um, and their work and, and really try to think about how these vagal pathways could be more finely dissected and understood. Yeah, at the, uh, yeah so thank you for reminding that study. So I didn't uh, closely follow that particular study, but it's interesting that you mentioned like uh, they, the, the nerve stimulation for that particular study it's a front of it's a vagal nerve stimulation or just stimulating the nerve innovating the um, pancreas. Um, they and, what yeah what they did <coughs> excuse me they mapped the nerve projecting to the pancreas from the vagal nerve so they really the you know have kind of dissected out the offshoot of the vagal nerve yeah. that innervates the pancreatic islets. Yeah, so those kind of study, I think also needed like a, it's interesting and also we needed to sometimes needed to revisit a little bit, you know, what's the nature of the nerve because the, for the, as we know, the um, pancreas also innovates a sensory afferent mm -hmm. and uh, um, the, uh, there is a, both like a, not only the efferent, like we call it the vagal efferent, like so the vagal efferent and like adrenal pathway, but also the vagal afferent which is a uh, innovate to the visceral organ. Uh, Brian Davis in at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, his study 
the pancreatic, you know, the uh, tumor uh, development. And then when he applied the sensory afferents, and uh, um, um, the tumor progression uh, uh, greatly slowed down, you know, in the pancreatic cancer. And mm -hmm. uh, there is some evidence that yeah, maybe that those uh, capsaicin sensitive sensory afferent may have some kind of anti inflammatory functions. They will mm -hmm. release some neuropeptide like a CGRP, for example. Mm -hmm. The peptide, they can reduce inflammation. For, so, I mean that for some like a direct electrical nerve stimulation for the nerve innovator, the pancreatic you know, tissue. Uh, at this stage, sometimes it's difficult to distinguish. It's really it's a sensory afferent, like sensory reflux. We know that we call it neuro neurogenic inflammation when sensory afferent, when they activate the, uh, the distal terminal, they can also release a neuropeptide and uh, to uh, impact the target tissue inflammation. And like, a, a, like a Isaac Chu at a Harvard Medical School, you know, he recently shown that the peptide, neuropeptide like CGRP can power, can hijack the immune system to reduce inflammation hmm. or sense even immune function. And so, so the, I think it will be this kind of raising some future study. Okay. For example, can, can we, uh, can acupuncture, you know, the non-invasive acupuncture, can we activate some, if the, some phagal efferents, not afferents, like a phagal efferent which innovate into the pancreatic tissue, what, what, what will be impact, you know, by acupuncture. So, and also, um, again, so it depends on what acupuncture to choose. Let's say uh, most likely for abdominal region, you know, because the serious segmental spinal sympathetic reflex, they can produce a sympathetic reflex to the pancreatic to tissue. As a question is, as I mentioned, in a splenic inflammation, the so sympathetic nerve activity can be um, bi-directional. Yeah. In you know, some disease condition will be anti-inflammation, uh, anti-inflammatory. In some disease condition will be pro-inflammatory. So mean that that's acupuncture stimulation, if you use a high intensity to activate spinal sympathetic reflex, will be beneficial for pancreatic, you know, patient or not. I think you need more study. Yeah. And uh, but the um, vagal adrenal access, uh, which is evoked by low electrical intensity from the hind limb region, which is through the vagal efferent and to the adrenal gland to release the dopamine, which may produce anti-inflammation because those dopamine is released to the circulation. It's like I say, like an like an endo, like hormone, you know, they circulate and uh, throughout the body, and then maybe worthwhile to to test if or not, you know, those dopamine related pathway can reduce yeah. inf inflammation in within the pancreas. That's so interesting. Example, yeah, uh, uh, it is. It, it's involved in the pancreatic beta cell uh, release of insulin. Yeah, so maybe I, uh, I can take a look or some people who listen to this one, interest this one, should go to take a look in the, um, because this is eventually, you know, immune cell profiling, like the immune cell, what are the neurotransmitters they have? <clears throat> Excuse me, eventually, we also really need to do this experiment. I think the, the paper we publish is really is a, a tips iceberg, you know, and, we yeah. only touch some like a um, general um, pathway, say, so it can impact the system inflammation. But a different organ has a different rule in terms of what, uh, sen what a sensory afferent can drive what kind of autonomic pathway. Like, for yeah. example, uh, I think it, yeah, I think it is so very important that you, that you got this paper out there because it opens the door for other inquiry. And it, it really, uh, it asks the question, you know, what other, how, how can we map this system, I think is what, what the yeah, your paper I really asks the community to, to start thinking about. Yeah, I think this, uh, this um, you know, if, if someone interested in this area for the pancreatic in you know, a society, you know, for example, diabetic society, it is doable, you know, for example, you can map what a sympathetic neuron innovate that tissue 
and uh, you can profile the immune cell, you know, what is the neurotransmitter receptor is at a different disease stage and what kind of change. Mm -hmm. Then we can, we can test that those are not, we call it a systemic like a, a adrenal pathway, which you can circulate through the entire body, maybe can impact inflammation in, uh, in maybe in many different organs. That's why the uh, acupoint ST36, people almost like a, generic medicine. They, this acupuncture stimulation can treat all kinds of human disease with <laughs> inflammation. Because in a, in a sense, if you think about it carefully, majority of human disease, it is inflammation, has one way and that has an in, inflammation component. That's a common share, common thing. If we can modulate this uh, systemic inflammation you know, through as a body, Maybe this is a one of the pathway. Maybe can also potentially beneficial for the diabetic, you know, uh, um, patients. It's yeah. possible. I think I need a more study. So we do need a, as I mentioned, you know, beginning. So for this kind of all our studies, raising the point for every disease model, you needed to study it and you needed to optimize what's role that this role we discover from ST thirty six can be. And beneficial for for the uh, um, pancreatic tissue or not? We don't know. For example, I can I, I can admit this a vagal uh, adrenal pathway is has a less impact for the splenic inflammation in the cell. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, operating more dominant in a non-splenic tissue, but whether or not that non-splenic tissue include pancreatic tissue we don't know you need a need a need a study yeah yeah well i mean this is to me this is fascinating work and i totally appreciate you sharing it with us today um if, if people are interested i would uh, direct them to read the the paper which is entitled somatotopic organization and intensity dependence and driving distinct mpy expressing sympathetic pathways by electroacupuncture came out in uh, August 12th in Neuron, and um, we will also provide uh, the link to that paper on the podcast, um, you know, a lead up information. But is there anything else you'd like to share with our readers or our listeners, I guess? Um, I think that's, we cover most part. Thank you very much, you know, Monica. For Thank you so much. Hopefully this study will stimulate more people, interest some of the traditional uh, medicine like uh, like acupuncture, they do have the modern neuroanatomical basis. In fact, we still know fairly little, you know, to understand you know how acupuncture or other alternative medicine like a uh, yoga, stretching, ex exercise, like in China like a uh, tai chi. Those are which I think is we in a different way can uh, drive the different uh, sensory pathway and also change a different mental state. And those mental state will greatly impact the autonomic system. That's why meditation can work to reduce some of the stress and uh, or reduce inflammation. I think there is a, a lot of common signs behind some of the we so-called complementary integrative medicine. But in fact, it's a really reflects, you know, we a, a philosophical change in to thinking about our disease is a whole body disease. Yeah. Disease, you know, as I said, many different ways can impact the disease progression. And then as, I think that's maybe hopefully can stimulate more study on this kind of alternative, non-traditional, you know, medicine. I agree. A thousand yeah. years of treating people mm -hmm. with this type of acupuncture is, is bound to yield some um, science behind it and it's just sort of there waiting for people to dive in so thank you so much for telling us all about your your paper and your process and we'll hope to speak to you again